Hello and welcome to my presentation. My recent doctoral research has focused on exploring historical tuber composer relationships, investigating how contemporary performance practice can be critically reflected upon regarding choices made when interpreting music of the past. Music of the mid to late Romantic era still often lacks such an approach, and the fact that this time period coincides with the moment when members of the tuba family begin to enter the orchestra is not without causal connection. The lack of symbiotic relationships between tubists and composers is deeply problematic with regard to the music of today, and issues similarly arise as soon as ensembles interested in critical performance practice begin to employ members of the tuba family. As typical examples, one can observe these concerts by the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment performing Wagner's Das Rheingold in 2004 and Verdi's Requiem in 2016. Included are, amongst many other carefully researched instrumental choices, 19th century bass trumpets and Italian valve trombones, yet the instruments of the tuba family used in both cases are of broadly mid to late 20th century design. Beyond the numerous logistical, political, pedagogical and economic arguments, I've been asking if there are any musical justifications in extending a historical critical performance practice approach to the tuba. At the same time, I've also been attempting to address some of the mythology surrounding orchestral tuba pedagogy by critically examining primary source material wherever possible. I've been recording excerpts from works including tuba family members on similar instruments to what might have been used at their first performances, so that each individual tuba player, conductor or indeed any interested party can make informed decisions regarding instrumentation, orchestration, articulation, dynamic and timbre, or any other musical parameter that an interpreter might wish to consider. As a case study, I'll focus here on almost certainly the most influential composer for the tuba, Richard Wagner. Wagner's first mature opera, Rienzi, employs both a serpent and an ophicleate, this choice being the result of geography. Although first performed in Dresden in 1842, Wagner wrote Rienzi in Paris between 1838 and 1840, where the ophicleate had been used at the Opera since 1819, although his use of the serpent here is more unusual. The serpent is most associated with its long-standing role of accompanying plain chant in the French church, although its supposed invention in Auxerre in 1590 has been questioned by scholars in recent years, some suggesting it descends rather from Italian bass cornets earlier in the 16th century. By the late 18th century, it had been adapted into various forms for use in marching and military bands, and had begun to gain some limited traction in the orchestra, although rarely being specified by name. For example, here is a quote-unquote serpent part for Mozart's Hafner Symphony used in early performances of the work by the Société du Concert in Lille. In a similar manner, Franz Ludwig Schubert makes this remarkable statement at the end of his entry on the instrument in his treaty The Instrumentationslehrer nach den Bedürfnissen der Gegenwart, published in 1862. The wonderful effect of the serpent in Beethoven's Fidelio is well known. In both cases here, the serpent is being used as a substitute for the bassoon, or contrabassoon, an instrument it was paired with in the few works that did specify its employment, such as Mendelssohn's Reformation Symphony and his oratorio Paulus. As acoustician Murray Campbell pointed out using these frequency spectrum charts, while the contrabassoon may have a fundamental pitch an octave lower than the serpent, the serpent is in fact much more effective at producing low frequency energy. It's in this manner that Wagner wrote for the serpent in Rienzi, as the base of the bassoon section. What is, however, more puzzling is the range of the part. The inherent acoustical limitations of the serpent mean that a precise range is hard to judge, but Wagner's writing for the instrument goes noticeably lower than what most skilled players could have managed. One possible explanation for this is due to differentiation in pitch between secular and sacred settings in France at the time. In the early 19th century, French ton de chapelle were still commonly found at roughly two semitones below the ton d'orchestre. This difference could explain why Berlioz, in his instrumentation treaty here of 1843, and most who copied him thereafter, declared the serpent to be a transposing instrument in B-flat. This would make the low B-flat and B-natural written here simple to play, rather than being very difficult using an instrument as one commonly finds it in C. In this treaty, Berlioz famously described the serpent's tone as raw and barbaric, in stark contrast to Schubert's description on the earlier slide of its sound as beautiful, full and pleasant. Berlioz's assessment was translated into German without comment by Richard Strauss in his edition of the book in 1905, yet 40 years earlier, in a separate essay commenting on Berlioz's work, Schubert wrote that if he had actually heard a good serpent player in Germany, he would probably have formed a very different opinion.
Whether or not Wagner was able to engage one of these good German serpent players for the premiere of Rienzi in Dresden in October 1842 is not clear. Klaus Ahringer suggests that it's quite possible that the Offerklied part was taken over by the tuba, although Wagner's relationship with this instrument in Dresden is not documented until the following season. Notably, when translating the names of instruments on the manuscript of his Faust overture from French to German for the first performance in July 1844, he changes serpent to bass tuba. The opening soli passage here goes down to a low G sharp, now absolutely only possible using Berlioz's hypothetical B-flat serpent. Given the practice of employing military bandsmen for extra-orchestral brass musicians, a practice commonplace until the mid-20th century, it is quite possible that the serpent part would have been performed using a basson russe, an instrument that is neither a bassoon nor Russian, but rather a form of upright serpent commonly found at the time in marching bands of the northern Germanic states. When recording excerpts of the part, however, I used a more traditional serpent ordinaire. <laughs> Wagner began composition of Die Fliegende Holländer in May 1840, before he had even finished Rienzi, yet he writes for a notably smaller orchestra with a reduction from triple to double winds, thereby removing the need for a serpent, although the Ophiclede remained in place at the base of the trombones. Premiered three months after Rienzi, in January 1843, it is similarly unclear as to what instrument would have been used at the time, perhaps a new bass tuba, but also plausibly one form of Ophiclede, such as the examples of northern German instruments from around this period shown here, one in the traditional French keyed style, the other a valved Ophiclede, which first emerged in Vienna in 1829. Any obvious suggestion of the part being played by a bass tuba is not made clear until sections of the version printed in 1860, where the instrument name has been changed, although it's worthy of note here that the difference between contemporaneous bass tubas and Ophicledes is not necessarily so great. The Ophiclid shown here on the right, made in around 1860 in Manchester, has a bell diameter of 242mm, indeed 49mm larger than that of the original Moritz bass tubas, shown here on the left. Keyed Ophiclides, however, do generally have a lower brassiness potential parameter figure than most tubas and valved Ophiclides. BPP is a quotient devised by organologist Arnold Myers to compare relative potential for non-linear sound propagation and therefore a metric to aid quantitative analysis of timbre brass instruments. The resultant dark sound of the keyed Ophiclede, rich in lower harmonics, can hopefully be heard in the following excerpts. <laughs> Tannhäuser was Wagner's first opera composed after his return to the German states, and it is the first major work written specifically with a bass tuba in mind. His awareness of the rarity of this instrument, invented only ten years earlier, is demonstrated by the fact that the part still fits the range of a B-flat Ophiclied. Records indicate that Gottfried Hinker did indeed play the part at the premiere in Dresden on a tuba, although in the original part the abbreviation Ophicle has been added in pencil, and for a performance of the overture in Zürich in 1852, Wagner himself marked the lower brass parts as bass trombone and Ophiclede. In 1846, a year after the premiere of Tannhäuser, Wagner makes it clear in this memorandum that the tuba position in the orchestra in Dresden needs to be fixed. <laughs> 
He recommends that a tuba player be hired by the orchestra that can also play double bass, helpfully also suggesting that this player, quote, must without a doubt earn an extra 50 talas per year because he has two instruments to play and to maintain the necessary energy he requires the best possible nourishment. In his next opera, Lohengrin, begun in the same year, he writes below an A1, thereby creating a part that can only be performed using a bass tuba. These excerpts are performed using this Swedish tuba from around 1860, which, in comparison to the previously shown Moritz tuba, demonstrates how these instruments had already begun to grow in size, and indeed spread across Europe. <laughs> Three years after the premiere of Lohengrin, Wagner begins composition of Der Ring des Nibelungen, and here is where Wagner's relationship with the Tuba family becomes particularly complicated. For context, here is an outline of the 23-year period between Wagner's initial sketching of the music for Das Rheingold in 1853, the performance of excerpts from the unfinished works in Vienna in 1862, the first performance of Das Rheingold and Die Waldkörer in Munich in 1869 and 70 and the Bayreuth premiere of the complete cycle in 1876. Wagner's orchestration has been discussed in depth by many scholars, but a critical examination of the lower brass parts has been somewhat overshadowed by extensive discussion of the instruments illustrated here, today known as Wagner tubers. In every study of Wagner's brass orchestration of the ring, from Oskar Franz's article in the Zeitschrift für Instrumentenbau in 1884 through to seminal late 20th century studies from Egon Voss and Kurt von Westenhagen, the regular tuba is partially or completely overlooked in favour of these horn-related tubas. Further research is needed to substantiate a theory from friend R. Overton, who suggested that with these instruments, Wagner was indeed attempting to recreate the sonority of the serpent that by the 1850s had fallen out of common practice. Wagner wrote to his patron, King Ludwig II, in 1865 that he included instruments in the ring that he first came across at the workshop of Adolf Sachs, von Westenhagen concluding that this must have taken place during Wagner's visit to Paris shortly before commencing composition of Rheingold in October 1853. Wagner's employment of a quintet of these instruments is supported by Peter Nitsch's study of the initial sketches for das Rheingold, where Wagner mentions one Saxon contrabass, and has a part transposed in E-flat. That would refer to the instrument here on the left, the others, Saxhorn Bass and Saxhorn Bariton, inspiring the Wagner tubers. He later changed the name to Posthorn Contrabass in S, and by the fifth page, CV Tube was added, as remained in the final score. In an 1862 letter to Josef Standhartner regarding the upcoming premiere of excerpts from Rheingold and Valkyra in Vienna, he refers to the instrument as a contrabass tuba in the E-flat, suggesting that this and the higher tubas could be found in the Austrian military bands, although perhaps under different names. In the parts made for these performances, the instrument is described as a bombardon, a word with many meanings, but as general rule, it is used to describe generic lower brass instruments with valves, particularly those used in military bands. This part would have been performed by the Wiener Philharmoniker's so-called bombardon blazer, Franz Fretzer using his new tuba slash helinkon in C mit vier Sindelen, acquired in June 1862 as part of the orchestra's adoption of the lower French pitch that year. This precise instrument, ordered from Leopold Ullmann, has not been sourced, but it can be assumed to be similar to the helicon pictured on the left here, built by fellow Viennese manufacturer Ignaz Storwasser in around 1850. The widespread terminological confusion surrounding the tuba can be demonstrated by comparing this instrument, described by cataloger and organologist John Henry van der Meer as a contrabass tuba, 
with these two other very different instruments under the same name from similar periods and similar locations in the same collection at the Germanisches Nationalmuseum. By 1866, discussions had already begun about the planned premiere of Das Rheingold by the Hofopfenorchester in Munich. As Eric Tremel noted, the orchestra had already purchased a bass tuba for the premiere of Tristan und Isolde the previous year from Karl Wilhelm Moritz in Berlin, son of Johann Gottfried Moritz, who had invented the bass tuba together with Wilhelm Wieprecht in 1835. Chief conductor Hans von Bülow contacted Wieprecht, who Tremel presumes von Bülow knew from his time living in Berlin before taking up the position in Munich in 1864, asking him to construct the new bass trumpet, contrabass trombone and contrabass tuba required by Wagner's score. At first, Wieprecht could not imagine such a contrabass instrument, suggesting either a, quote, bass contra tuba in E-flat with six valves, or a contrabass tuba in contra F tube length, twice as long as the common bass tuba with five valves. He suggests that the latter option here is very unlikely to be practical, noting that, quote, this would, however, constitute an instrumental colossus, exceeding even the so-called low B-flat basses commonly found in Austria, which are almost invincible to the strength of human lungs. In a later letter, he made it clear that his recommendation was a bass tuba in E-flat with six valves, referring to an illustration that has unfortunately been disposed of by the Bayerische Staatsarchiv. Acquisition of this instrument was seemingly not feasible for financial reasons. Von Bülow even suggested sending back the tuba they had bought for Tristan so that an extra valve could be added, but Moritz this time replied that this would not solve the problem, quote, since it is not set up for this purpose. Its tubes and bell construction were not made anywhere near wide enough to give room for development of the longer air passage enabled by the sixth valve. The tone would therefore always sound small and without definition. His final suggestion came in the next sentence. In order to be able to produce a powerful tone that speaks easily, an instrument is required which, if permitted, I would send for inspection. This instrument is in low B flat, and contains all contrabass notes with an easy response at powerful volume. Tremble surmises that this production of a contrabass tuba in B-flat was the solution to the problem, but unfortunately there's no evidence to support this. There's no more extant communication between the two parties, of course von Bülow never actually conducted the premiere, and although some isolated reference to Moritz instruments in B-flat exist, there are no records of instruments that might indeed have been shipped to Munich. Although in his history of the orchestra, Hans Joachim Nussel does note that there was an, quote, Offerklied bass tuba blazer engaged in the orchestra from 1869, Rudolf Strobel I, there's no indication of whether he played in these performances or, as Tremble suggests, was also a possibility a member of the Münchner Regimentskapelle had been employed to play Bombardon. Regarding the extra brass instruments needed for these performances, Nussel merely conjectures that, quote, evidently things were managed somehow. Importantly, in this piece on the right by Wilhelm Altenburg, celebrating the centenary of the Moritz factory, published in the Zeitschrift für Instrumentenbau in 1907, reference is made to production of the bass trumpet and contrabass trombone for these performances, but there's nothing regarding a contrabass tuba. Speculation regarding what instrument could have been used often focuses on instruments made by the bohemian manufacturer Vaclav Franciszek Czerveni, among the many manufacturers producing their own style of lower brass valve instruments in the mid to late 19th century, Cerveni is noted for recognising, as Moritz pointed out earlier, that a wide bore size is needed to create strong, low fundamental sound, such as in his instrument here on the right. Low Bavarian instruments of the time, such as the two shown here from the most reputable Munich brass manufacturers, Josef Sauler and Andreas Barth, are known as Halbinstrumenter, meaning that their bore is narrow enough to inhibit production of the lowest fundamentals, incidentally a problem that also affected Sax's early contrabass sax horns that Wagner might have heard in 1853. That means that these contrabass instruments pitched in low C cannot play notes as low as those can be achieved with relative ease using Moritz's F tuba, despite having an overall tube length that's almost a metre longer. Chevenit has generally been seen as continuing this Moritz-style Gans instrumenta. As Clifford Devon wrote and has been propagated and translated by many others, quote, Chevenit is generally credited with the invention of the contrabass tuba in C in 1845. 
going so far as to say that, quote, Wagner specified it from Das Rheingold onwards. Such statements are, however, misleading. No contemporary commentators mention creation of a contrabass tuba at this time. In an 1872 publication, Cervini himself calls it simply a contrabass, an instrument, quote, in the form of a bombardon, brackets tuba, in contra F and C. The instrument is not clearly illustrated in any publications, for a manufacturer whose instruments were overwhelmingly positively received by commentators at the great exhibitions of the time in Paris, London and Vienna, focus is rather directed on Cervini's new Gans instrumenta of tenor bass size, shown here, the Baroxiton and Cornon. The only extant illustration of this contrabass is shown here on the left in an advertisement that has been dated by Tremor to around 1854. Perhaps it is this instrument to which Wieprecht was referring in his letter quoted above regarding the instrumental colossi found in Austria. No surviving examples of any of the instruments illustrated here have been found, so perhaps none of them were ever produced on a large scale. As an example of persistent misinformation regarding these instruments, this serpent bombardon in F can be found in Friedrich Zaminer's Contemporaneous Guide to Musical Instruments and Acoustics, Yet, he refers to it as a bass ophiclede in contra B-flat, a description lacking in both acoustic and organological reasoning. In 1884, Cervini patented what was undoubtedly his most successful invention, the Kaiser bass, an instrument which forms the genesis of many contrabass tubers used and built today. But it is important not to confuse this instrument with any instruments from 30 or 40 years earlier. What is certain is that neither instrument was, quote, specified by Wagner in Das Rheingold. Some have argued that Cervini's Kornon formed one possible instrument used for Wagner tubers in early ring cycle performances after Wagner realised that Sax's instruments were not found in the German-speaking world. There is, however, no evidence of direct communication between the two men, as opposed to Wagner's numerous documented exchanges with both Sax and Wieprecht. Speculation regarding the instrumentation at these first performances in Munich is arguably of limited value, given that Wagner himself disavowed their productions and fought hard to ensure none of his circle of colleagues were in attendance. Indeed, by May of 1870, he was already asking Hans Richter to help arrange the extra brass instruments needed for Bayreuth, and was in touch with his publisher's Franz Schott regarding changes to transpositions. In this letter to Schott in 1873, he seems to accept that sax horns will not be available, writing that the contrabass tuba is to be transposed to C, so six tones lower than an E-flat, and it has been as it has been performed so far. C3 in the original score will sound as E-flat 2. This seems to be due to his awareness of the C helicon that was being used by Fretzer in 1862, but it's also a reversion to writing once more tuba parts in concert pitch, accepting that the tubist will play it on whatever instrument they have to hand and doing any necessary transpositions themselves, a practice among orchestral tuba players that continues to this day. In his role organising the extra brass instruments for Bayreuth, Richter hires the young Berliner tubist Otto Waldemar Brooks, beginning in the summer of 1875 for the first rehearsal period. In September of that year, he took over from Fretzer at the Wiener Hofopfen Orchester and on the 4th of October, the opera ordered a new tuba for him to use from the Berliner instrument manufacturer Paulus. Brooks left the orchestra after the ring premiere in 1876, returning to Berlin and later becoming an opera singer and director. Meanwhile, evidence of the precise instrument ordered for him has been lost, but it's likely to be very similar to this five-valved F-tuba made by Leopold Ullmann from around 1875, bought by the orchestra in 1885. The situation is clarified in this letter to renowned instrument maker Wilhelm Heckel from opera director Wilhelm Jahn in 1894, where he writes that, quote, in the Wagnerian works there are two tenor tubers in B-flat, furthermore two bass tubers in F, and one five-valved contrabass tuba tuned in F with a register from C1 to C5, a usable register as far as F4. This description is remarkably similar to the manner in which Wieprecht described the original bass tuba invention in the 1835 patent shown here. Indeed, the register mentioned by Jan fits that shown here precisely. Wieprecht describes it as a dual bass and contrabass instrument, but under the name of bass tuba, as Wagner has also previously described it, and indeed did so afterwards in Parsifal. The question therefore arises as to why the instrument used in the ring was consistently referred to as a contrabass tuber. 
there are several plausible explanations for this. Perhaps it's a remnant of the original desire for a contrabass sax horn. More practically, it could simply be maintained to avoid confusion with the tenor and bass Wagner tubers. Or indeed, perhaps it is to signify how the instrument had increased in size since 1835, as I demonstrated earlier. It is, of course, also probable that after deciding to transpose the part back to concert pitch, Wagner gave little thought any more to the actual instrument being used at all. In any case, a Viennese tradition was established using this form of f tuba, known today as a Wiener tuba, which continued until at least 1911, when Emil Hartmann, who was also referred to, also referred to his now six-valve f tuba as a contrabass tuba, played at Bayreuth for the final time. It's striking to compare this instrument with those in B-flat and C, now commonly described as contrabass tubas. Shown here are typical instruments used today in performances of the ring. In the middle, an instrument in B-flat, commonly used in Germany, and on the left, a model in C, found more frequently in the rest of the world. Unfortunately, I have so far been unable to access a Wiener tuba under current lockdown conditions to make recordings. In the meantime, however, for later comparison, I've been able to make recordings using this Bavarian instrument on the right from around 1870, here the famous Wurm solo from Das Rheingold. This contrabass tuba practice extends further than the music of Wagner himself, as this table shows. My research in this field is still ongoing, but all evidence I've found so far suggests that these composers used the term for similar reasons as those suggested before. Benjamin Gunnar Kors has argued that Bruckner specified contrabass tuba only to avoid confusion with the Wagner tubas. This indeed would explain, for example, why bass tuba is written for the movements of the Seventh Symphony without Wagner tubas, and contrabass tuba for the movements with. Mahler worked with the aforementioned Emil Hartmann in both Berlin and Vienna around the time of the premiere of his second symphony. His other symphonies all only mentioned bass tuba, despite some later editions changing this, albeit inconsistently, to contrabass tuba. Schoenberg provides a puzzling example with Gurrelieder, where the part seems to swap between bass and contrabass tuba. I have not yet found a conclusive answer to this question, but the very limited use of the term bass tuba appearing in less than 2% of measures in the whole work combined with the lack of any musical distinction between these parts and the contrabass tuba sections, suggests that this situation resulted from a copyist error, perhaps over inconsistent use of BSTA for bass tuba and BASTA for bass Wagner tuba. The bass tuba and Wagner tubas are never found simultaneously, and the bass tuba is only present in the sections orchestrated in 1910 after Schoenberg took a nine-year hiatus from working on the piece, perhaps also explaining the confusion. Most notably of all, in all of Schoenberg's listings of the instrumentation of the work, from the earlier sketches through to the final published score with all instrumental doublings, as seen here, he only ever includes some spelling of contrabass tuba, bass tuba only being mentioned specifically in modern editions. I'm looking to investigate more connections between tubists and composers and search for further representative examples of instruments in working order. For example, when organising Wagner's concerts in England in 1877, Hans Richter ordered a tuba from Irish manufacturer William Hilliard, an instrument of such high renown that it became the blueprint for the English F-tuba written for by Elgar, Holst, Vaughan Williams and many more. Recordings on this instrument and many others can be found via my website, with more being added soon. <laughs> 
Thanks very much for listening and I look forward to your questions and comments.